Hello everybody, my name is Mosh Hamadani. I teach mostly C Sharp, .NET courses, Ace.NET, and the framework, and some Angular courses. I started three years ago, but I knew about Udemy long before. In fact, my inspiration was Mark Lassoff, if I pronounce his last name properly. I don't think he's here. Um, one day I came to his page on Facebook and I saw he, has, he had like 5,000 students and the price of his course was like $100. And I said, wow, this guy is making a million dollars with just one course. And I didn't know all these courses are sold at $10 or $20. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to do that for a long time. But um, working full time as a software engineer, it was really hard. When I came home, it was, I had no energy to produce a course until I decided to quit my job and uh, decided not to look for a new job and create my first Udemy course. So I spent about three weeks to create one hour of content, hardly made $100, maybe $50. And then I created another course for six hours, which took me about six weeks of production. And that was one of the on-demand courses in Udemy's hot topic list. And that course also didn't sell, it was like $100 at the best. And then I looked for a new job and they said, okay, you're gonna start in three weeks. And I said, okay, what am, I, what am I gonna do in those three weeks? I don't wanna sit at home, watch TV. So I ended up creating my third course. Uh, that was my C Sharp Advanced course and I started to earn about $1,000 a month and I thought, okay, this is working. All, I, all my expectation was about 500 extra cash a month, nothing more. I wasn't like, I want to become a millionaire on Udemy. No, just wanted $500 extra. And I wanted to reach my goal, and then I discovered my passion for teaching. And I never really looked for making money on this platform, but just getting feedback from my students about what they wanted to learn from me. And I created lots of courses, and then they organically grew. I told a funny story they wanted me to share. I used to live in Melbourne, Australia, and I just moved to LA about two months ago. And one night I was out salsa dancing, and people in this crowd would do a bit of Latin dancing, they know the etiquette. So you dance with one person, they say thank you, and then you move on to the next person. So after I finished dancing with a lady, a guy tapped me on the shoulder like he wanted to ask me for a dance. <laughs> and he said, are you Mosh Hamadani? And I looked different there because I was wearing a hat, different look from what you see in my videos. And I said, yeah, he said, I'm one of your students. I've taken a lot of your courses. So he was the first student that I ever met in person. And I think the last student I ever met. Did you dance with No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Only with <ladies. laughs>So in, in my courses, in every section, at the end of the section, I have a practice, which is a coding exercise, not a quiz, not a question and answer. It's a coding exercise. They have to build something. And it's something that they can do in 30 minutes, not something that they're going to spend two days or three days and then become disappointed. Oh, okay, sorry. And then I also show the solution myself, how I started that project, how I'm thinking throughout this journey, how I change my code, how I refactor it and make it better give them some tips along the way, like some shortcuts to write code faster. Uh, something more than just giving them the solution. I, sh I show them the hows and whys. Um, and then I also upload the code to GitHub. Some people love GitHub. The others don't like it. They like attachments as zip files. So I, I try to cater for different kinds of audiences. How many of those exercises do you typically include in your courses? How many? Mm -hmm. So each course I have on average has about 10 to 15 sections, so one exercise at least, a section, sometimes two. In fact, uh, I've asked my students in my surveys, uh, what do you think about my teaching? What do you think I can improve? And I still get a lot of feedback. We need more exercises. Even though sometimes I include two exercises per section, they want more. Wow. So, <laughs> How do you stay on top of that? Sorry? How do you stay on top of uh, all of the exercises? It's, it's really hard um, because um, I have limited time just like everyone else <laughs> throughout the day and part of me wants to create more content for those people who are hung hungry for learning more uh, but at the same time I have to slow down and um, yeah, create more exercises for people who need a little bit more help. Yeah, YouTube, I had zero subscribers. I started there, just like everyone else. Uh, I never thought I could have 70,000 subscribers, but I got it pretty quickly. Um, all you have to do is upload really good quality videos, 
don't be greedy thinking, oh, no, I want to keep the good quality ones for my course and just show an introduction for two minutes. It's like an advertisement. People are not going to get your course. Share as much content as you want, be, as you can, be generous. Uh, like my YouTube videos are about one hour, sometimes one and a half hour. And they can learn a lot from that. They don't have to come and enroll in my course. But those who are more passionate, they're more dedicated to learn, uh, I put a link in the video description and I give them a coupon. Uh, in terms of um, something I wanted to add uh, for to previous question, when I want to publish a course, I always announce on YouTube about two months before, say, hey, in a month or two months, uh, I'm going to publish this course. So I give them heads up and a lot of people start to get excited about that. Then when it gets closer, about a week before, I send another announcement. Sometimes it's a short, simple video that I take with my phone. And then when the course is released, I send the coupons and I say, this is valid for three, four days. Uh, and then after that, I take these videos off my YouTube channel because I don't like it to look salesy. It's just for a special occasion. This is actually a very good question because uh, both Max and I recreated our course from scratch just because of an update for this candidate. <laughs> so I feel your pain. Um, sometimes if there are dramatic changes, you really have to create a course from scratch. Because in my case, I tried to patch the course and that didn't work. I tried to add supplementary videos in between and also some PDFs attached them to specific le lectures saying these are the syntactical changes. Some people loved it, they said that's perfect. There were a lot of people who complained. And that's why I ended up recreating the course from scratch. Um, so honestly, I don't have a specific formula that works for everyone, but these are the things that I have played with and you can try it on your own. So options are patching the videos or adding supplementary materials, various forms of PDF or video, or recreating the course from scratch. Hopefully that won't happen.